Okay, this is a very quick tutorial on Google SketchUp. First of all, select this little man here and delete him off. I'm going to draw a rectangle. It's this icon here. From here, 6,000, 10,000. That's 6 meters by 10 meters. Next thing I'm going to do is use offset to create the walls. So offset on this face, I'm going to bring them in 100 millimeters. Normally an external wall would be 300 millimeters. I'll use push-pull and select that area and go up oh, 3 meters, 3000. Zoom extents. Next thing I'm going to do is turn all these objects into a block or into a group, sorry, into a group. Triple click, right click, make group. And the other thing I need to do is to make a couple of layers. So go to window, layers, plus button here. Uh, first one's going to be walls, and another layer called roof. Close that down. So this entity, I'm going to right click on its entity, it tells me a bit of information about what I've selected. It's going to be on layer walls. Okay. Next thing I'm going to do is create a new rectangle on top of this group of walls. And then I can hide group below. So first of all, go to the select button, select the item, then right click and select hide, which will hide that group for me and leave me just the rectangle for the roof. So once again use the offset command, come in 100 millimeters and push pull to create a little parapet roof, come up say 800 millimeters. Okay. Everything here, triple click, go to the end of the info, and put everything on to the roof layer. Okay, don't need, don't need that anymore. What I want to do is take this front face and the lower line and put it onto the lower group. So I'm going to paste a, an image on the front face of the building shortly. So, first of all, select the face. I'll close that out of the way. Select the face, hold down shift, and select the line. Go up to the edit command up in the top left and cut it out. It's now on the clipboard. So I have to unhide the last object, which was my group at the bottom. Double click on to edit the group. Um, now I can edit, paste in place. That brings in that face which I had taken from the top and the line. So I can get rid of this line now by using the arrows command here. There we go. And in fact, I don't actually need to have a group anymore, so I can explode the group. Click off it, click back on, and explode this group. In fact, I don't need these lines around any of the walls. I can erase them all off. So erase that line, that line, that line, and go back front of the building. Okay, what I'm going to do next is to import an image. So we got to go to the file, import option. The first thing you should always do is tell it what type of file you're looking for. Uh, this is going to be a JPEG. That's the last thing I was looking for, so it's the last thing it remembers. JPEG image. Make sure you tell it which file you're looking for, first of all. Um, I have this bookshop inside this folder. And the other thing you must make sure for this part of it is to use it as a texture. We're going to import an image and use it as a texture. So that's the one I want to select. Click open. I'll put it on the front face, so we select the bottom left and the top right of the face. You'll see it'll clip it off. 
So what I'm going to look at next is how to position the texture a little more accurately. To do that, the image is still selected. As you can see, lots of dot dots all over it. Right click. We're going to go to the texture option and position. I want to alter the position of the image on the face. And my image has come up with four yellow pins in the corner of the image. If you don't have the yellow pins, simply right click and make sure the fix pins is not selected. If we want to move these pins, they're the corners of the image, so we can drag them by clicking on them once, left click and hold down on your mouse button, you can drag it down to the corner of the face, which is there, and there. We hit done. Right click and then select done. The image could do with a little tidy up, a little bit more accuracy. I'm getting a bit of pavement here, which I don't want to see. So what I can do with that is again modify where the pins are. So if I right click, go to the texture position, you can lift up a pin by left clicking on it once. Set it back down where you want your new corner to be, say about here. Left click once. And then I can left click and drag it to back to that corner. That will stretch the image accordingly. You can do the same over here. You can lift that pin up, left click to put it down, then click and drag it back down to that corner. Let me have a quick look at the top two corners. Um, yeah, I could lift this pin from here, maybe put it over to here a little bit, and then drag it back onto that corner. And if I'm finished, right click, select done. There's the image on the face. I might actually change this top or right as well. So right click, position, select that, move it over to say about here, and then drag it back over. And right click and done. It's not too bad, I'll do it rightly. Okay, next thing I want to do is to create an opening at the front of this building. This is, this is where the door is, obviously. So if I go to the rectangle command, make sure I'm on the edge of the, the front edge. Select roughly about there, just end this up. And top right would be roughly about there. Then I can push pull that new face back 100 mil. That creates an opening through the building. That looks nice. Um, the outer walls you can put a uh, texture on. Let me see. The material. Paint bucket tool. You can select bricks. Select bricks. For here. For here. The top edge. Effect for the inner wall up there as well. Whole image all the way around back here and here. We got everything. No, that one there. In fact, maybe the top face I will have it black. Maybe it's black. There we go. Now, what I want to do next is to position a door on the back wall, far exit, just somewhere around here. Um, I'm going to use the rectangular tool again, like I did on the front of the building rectangle somewhere along this edge here. And the upper right I'm going to actually specify is 900 to the left and it's 2000 millimeters high. That's the rectangle drawn. Push pull, push that face back and then I create an opening. But what I want to do this time is to use a component from the internet. And up at the very top here is this icon for getting models. A lot of people have created models. And they're stored in the Google 3D warehouse. I'm going to select the quirky door. I'll find it. This. Uh, let's turn that off. Don't know why it keeps going. Up. This is a dynamic component. You can tell by this little symbol here. Okay, it's a quirky door. This little symbol has a dynamic component. So click on this once and I'm going to download the model. 
Do it directly into the Google SketchUp model, yes. There it is. Only thing you gotta be careful of is whenever you position it, uh, it doesn't flip over to the wrong axis. So once you get in the right axis, right place, left click. This is a component, it's a dynamic component, and as you can see, the door is the wrong size for the opening. We can quickly change that because it's a dynamic component. Up here, we have this toolbar for dynamic components. And so in the middle one is the component options. So click on that. The person who's created this here has allowed you to change a lot of the, the elements of it. The height of the door is 210 centimeters, which is 2,100 millimeters. So our opening was 200 centimeters. The thickness of our walls was only 10 centimeters, 100 millimeters. Press apply. Will fit the door perfectly. The thing you can do with dynamic components is they can interact. So this icon, this little hand, if you click on your door once, it will open 45 degrees. Click on it once again, it will open up 90 degrees. You can see right inside our building. Okay, uh, next thing I want to show you is how to cut through the building. So if you want to work inside the building, there are two ways of doing it. You could turn off the layer for the roof. I can now see down inside my building. That's one way of doing it. The other option for working inside the building and not turn off layers is to use sections. I've got three icons up here. It's a section plane. This will create a section plane along any face that you flip it over to. So if I click here, it will cut through the building. This is like any object within SketchUp. You can move it. So first of all, select it. It will go blue. Then use the Move option to move along one of the axes. So I can cut right through the building, say to this point here. And then I can install some bookcases, um, shelving, whatever I need. If you're finding that the, the section plane is a bit annoying, you can switch it, display the section cuts, so that means it, it will be active or not active. And you can also hide the actual section planes themselves, so they're not in your way as you're working. They're only temporary. Once you're finished with them, you simply select them and delete them. They're no longer there. I think that will do us. So you can uh, apply materials inside the building as well for the flooring. Um, views of your building. Simply go to the top view. Probably another little tip for you here is that the, the view at the moment is a, is a well it's perspective view. Under camera, it's a perspective view. If you're looking from above, it's probably better to have a par sorry about that, a parallel projection. And then you can turn off the roof layer. You can see down inside your building that way. That's a much better view. You make a scene then at that point your scenes dialog. That could be one scene, that could be your first scene. And then turn the perspective back on, change over to an isometric view, turn back on the roof layer and zoom in a little bit here, just to fill the page and create another scene. So you can flick back and forward between two different views of your object and whether the camera is perspective or parallel. I think that's all I'll cover with you today.